The KXAN News Podcast is sponsored by Shelf Genie. Now at five, protecting our girls. A renewed call for teen girls to speak up. We're digging into the new report revealing a sharp rise in the number of young women in America forced into sex. And Tesla expanding in California with another headquarters. What Elon Musk is saying about dual headquarters. 91 degrees today, the hottest day of the year by far, but two cold fronts are coming in first warning weather. And first tonight, Austin Travis County EMS says a person died on the Barton Creek Greenbelt after a possible fall from a cliff. This is happening in South Austin near Barton Hills Drive between Mopac and Lamar Boulevard. We are working to find out more information for you. And thanks so much for joining us this evening. I'm Jennifer Sanders. I'm Daniel Marine. Austin ISD is laying out the projects it will tackle first, paid for by the $2.4 billion voters approved in November for school improvements. And as Nabil Ramana shows us, some of those projects will be starting soon. After the bond passed, the district went to work prioritizing which schools would receive work the fastest. And today they released a timeline showing what those schools are and when that work should begin. The 2022 bond includes 25 schools that would be modernized. Four other schools on the list, Cook, Oak Hill, Odom, and Williams, are open concept and will receive major upgrades as well. The district says it has prioritized safety and security to figure out which schools would receive work and when, but it also wanted to ensure schools in historically underserved areas are also prioritized. The district says the planning is already happening and projects will start soon. Also see some work going on uh, this summer with some of those safety and security projects, fences, uh, improvements to the locks and keys and door hardware, um, and then some other things like HVAC, which aren't safety and security, but, um, but are critical to uh, keeping the, the students and the faculty and staff comfortable in our buildings. AISD says modernization projects will continue for the next six years, with some being completed as soon as 2025. Nabil Ramadna, KXAN News. And the bond includes more than 300 targeted projects across the district, including adding secure entry vestibules to every school that does not currently have one. We do have a map and a timeline of the full bond project schedule for you at KXAN.com. You'll also find a link to the district's new site that will let you see how every bond dollar is spent. And while we hit degrees in the 90s today, millions in the Rockies, Northern Plains and Upper Midwest are under, wind, under winter weather alerts. The South Dakota Highway Patrol recorded this video of near zero visibility on the roads in Edmonds County. Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans, this storm is actually one of the reasons we're so warm today, right? That's exactly right. But first take a look at what Wyoming Highway Patrol caught on video. A police officer right there, geez, caught on video standing outside of his car, narrowly escaped being hit by a semi truck that lost control on a snowy road. Luckily, as you watch this again, incredible, nobody was injured. Back here at home, really the tale of two cities in different parts of the country. We hit 90 plus degrees today, a month and a half ahead of schedule. If you go by the long term average, matter of fact, today with a high of 91 at Camp Mabry, it was a top 10 earliest 90 degree heat day in Austin. South Austin right now, it's still very similar. If you want to go to the neighborhood pool or something, go for it. 88 degrees under mostly sunny skies at the Wildflower Center. Still 89 back at Camp Mabry, 86 in Georgetown, lower middle 80s on most areas on the map outside of the Austin Metro. Up the road, though, this is what's bringing all that snow to other parts of the nation. And this strong Arctic cold front just north of Oklahoma City now appears on track to come here, at least for some of us. Coming up, we've got new information on how much we cool off briefly on Friday. Rain chances coming along with it and another weekend warm up. All right, David, thank you. A new report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is revealing an unprecedented wave of grief and sadness among teenage girls. And tonight, Erica Edwards digs into one of those shocking statistics. Nearly 20% said they had been victims of violent sexual behavior. Last week when the CDC issued its stunning report on the dismal state of teen mental health in the U.S., I decided to look a little bit deeper into one of the most troubling statistics. That is that more than 1 in 10 teen girls said that they had been raped. When you crunch the numbers, that's more than 1 million girls. Now, this survey was done in 2021 when many kids were locked down at home in what should have been a safe space. But sex assault experts remind us that many such attacks occur in families or among close relationships. So in fact, in 
some cases, uh, lockdown increased the exposure to some of these people. What's more, rape crisis counselors tell me that they saw an astronomical rise in the number of reports of cyber sexual violence, like online stalking. I talked with high school girls who said that some of these numbers sound like underestimates, that many young women are still too afraid to speak up. But experts remind us that if there's one thing that people should remember, it's this, not a single girl involved in any unwanted sexual contact is to blame, not one of them. They can recommend confiding in a trusted adult and getting help. Erica Edwards, NBC News. Tesla CEO Elon Musk met with California's governor today, giving him a tour of Tesla's new engineering headquarters in Palo Alto. Musk told CNBC, quote, we're a California, Texas company. He said the new facility in California is effectively a headquarters for Tesla and that it's kind of a dual headquartered company. Tesla's main headquarters remains in Austin. First Lady Jill Biden touched down in Namibia today to start a five-day visit to Africa. Namibia's First Lady greeted her and paid respects at Heroes Acre. That's an official war memorial in Namibia. And the office of the First Lady says Biden's visit will focus on the empowerment of women and youth and really look at the issue of food insecurity in that region. Back in the U.S., former President Donald Trump visited East Palestine today as cleanup continues from the train derailment more than two weeks ago now. What do you make of Biden, or rather Buttigieg's criticism of you pulling back rail regulations? Do you think it would have made no, a difference? No, I had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do No, he's got to work in the airports. We've never had airports like this. And Trump also told the crowd today that he had donated several thousand gallons of cleaning supplies and bottled water. Well, just ahead, why Cap Metro's big expansion of rapid routes is now delayed a full two years. And we know how big a problem illegal dumping has become, and it's only gotten worse since the ice storm. How Williamson County Constable hopes to crack down. And a year after last year's Supreme Court abortion ruling, it's a whole new world for future OBGYNs. How that ruling is changing training and education programs. Hawaiian Airlines is adding a fourth weekly flight between Austin to Honolulu beginning at the end of May. So it's making the return flights from Honolulu to Austin a red-eye flight. Right now, planes leave Honolulu at 9.45 a.m. and arrive back in Austin just after 9 p.m. Soon, they'll leave the island at 7 p.m. and arrive in Austin the next morning just after 7 a.m. And that might help you squeeze in one more day at the beach. Very nice. All right, well, Cap Metro riders will have to wait a little longer for the launch of two new Metro Rapid bus lines under the Project Connect program. Transit leaders originally projected the launch to launch the Pleasant Valley and Expo Center lines this summer. Now Cap Metro CEO Dottie Watkins tells KXAN instead, those will come online in 2025. These will be our first two routes that are all fully battery electric buses. And we learned as we started getting into the real detailed analysis that we needed to account for charging infrastructure on the routes. And we hadn't originally planned for that. Cab Metro will build charging infrastructure into park and ride stations planned along both routes. Both lines will also feature walking and bike paths, as well as accessibility upgrades for riders. For more on the project details, just head on over to KXAN.com and click on this story. Well, as we feared, the little rain showers for some of us this morning failed to deliver no measurable rain at the airport nor at Camp Mabry. But at our unofficial observation stations, maybe close to your house, we did get up to a third of an inch of rain, for instance, in the northern hill country. Find your rain totals anytime at KXAN.com. Your first warning forecast now with some cooler air coming next. This KXAN News Podcast is brought to you by Shelf Genie. I'm Rosie Newberry from KXAN Studio 512. Considering replacing your kitchen cabinets? Struggling to find or reach things? Go to ShelfGenie.com slash Austin. Shelf Genie designs custom pull-out shelves for your existing cabinets, adding convenience and value to the most used room in your home. Shelf Genie custom pull-out shelves, everything in reach. An illegal dumping problem in Williamson County has gotten worse thanks to this month's ice storm. And KXAN's Mercedes Hernandez spoke with the county constable who says dump trash and debris have really been a growing problem. And depending on where it lands, cleaning it up could cost you. Illegal dumping has disrupted the peace and quiet in rural Williamson County. It's, it's pretty disgusting. You know. Jay Mickelinchuk lives down the road from this dump site filled with mattresses, tires and even a kitchen sink. It's also going on, you know, north of Taylor too, you know, and kind of vacant places where nobody lives. We work it like every criminal 
case would be worked. Precinct 4 Constable Paul Leal says his team of environment crimes deputies investigates dumpings like this. Last year, they had more than 800 reports of it. It's been going on for decades, and, uh, you know, the more we grow, the more it happens. He says while debris from the ice storm is adding to their problems, construction debris is the biggest issue. You hire somebody to replace your roof. You don't vet them. You go with the cheapest bid you get, and they haul your stuff to a ditch and dump it because they don't want to pay the landfill. Leal says if a pile is on county land or right of way, his crews clean it up. But if it's on private property... Now they're stuck trying to get it out of there and paying the cost of that, and it's not fair. Mickalin Chuck agrees and wants those trashing his neighbor's land to stop. You're born and raised here, you know, and you see how pretty it is, and then now you see all that being dumped and piled up on the side of the road. It looks bad. In Taylor, Mercedes Hernandez, KXAN News. And Constable Leal says he's putting together a training course to teach law enforcement from cities in Williamson County how to pursue illegal dumping cases. The goal is to keep his team from being stretched even thinner. First warning weather with Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans. Okay, well, Mabry and the Austin Airport hit 90 and 91 degrees today, respectively. This is about 40 days ahead of average for 90 degree heat. Winter not completely over. We do have some cooler weather coming in a couple of days, but boy, it sure doesn't feel like it this afternoon. ACs are blasting. The sun has been quite strong today, mostly sunny and 89 on the Austonian weather camp. Hill country temperatures after a third of an inch of rain up in the northern hill country. Temperatures were not that bad today. Today, lower 80s from Cherokee to Richland Springs, 84 down in Stonewall, a little warmer on 281. Speaking of warm, look at this, 88 in Round Rock, 89 in Pflugerville and downtown, 89 degrees in Lakeway as well. This is after a couple spots hit 92 inside the Austin city limits on the LCRA thermometers today. East of I-35 looks a little better the farther you get from I-35. This is because the downsloping wind on the escarpment has less of an effect once it hits the flatter terrain out east. 87, though, in Bastrop and in Lockhart. Still a very warm day. Hey, great news from our hourly updates of our new sophisticated pollen equipment up on the roof. Mold, ash, cedar, elm, and oak all checking in in low category and all trending lower over the past 24 hours. There's a lot of weather going on outside of Texas, even with hot sunshine here locally. We've got high wind warnings in New Mexico with hurricane force gusts, numerous power outages expected where it's not even raining or snowing from the wind. This storm system has canceled a reported 1,400 flights in the west so far today, but a big ridge of high pressure is building ahead of it. This thing is going to lead to record heat in the eastern seaboard. 80 degrees tomorrow in February in Washington, D.C. In the meantime, what a disparity it is. Below zero in the northern Rockies to north Dakota, 89 degrees here in Austin. By the way, it's been even warmer in Austin today than it's been in Miami, Florida. Don't get used to it, though. We've got a cool front coming tomorrow and then a cold front coming on Friday. Let's get you caught up with what to expect. This evening, lighter winds, clear skies. It'll be quite comfortable by morning. Here comes a little subtle cool front by sunrise. Just a nice northerly wind shift tomorrow. Not a windy day, but a nice drop in temperatures. Back to a little more reasonable levels, upper 70s, lower 80s, under dry conditions. But after another abnormally warm day indeed tomorrow, a cooler day on Friday. Remember, we've been talking about the computer models disagreeing. Will that big front stall north of us or will it blow through? Now that it's come within the 72 hour range of a lot of our better high resolution computer models, we're gaining more confidence that it should make it through, at least for most of us. Here we are on Friday. I'll pause you Friday afternoon during the warmest part of the day. We could have many folks from Austin northwestward having afternoon highs in the 50s, so a much cooler uh, day briefly on Friday, but ahead of the front, wherever it may stall, we could still be quite warm. So the position of this is still going to be a little tricky, but overall we do expect a big cool down just for one day on Friday. Also, along with that cold front, clouds and a few light rain showers on Friday. But even looking all the way to Saturday morning, just not a whole lot of beneficial rain, just a little mist and drizzle to end the work week. Tonight's forecast, cooler, mainly clear with light winds, 56 degrees by morning. Be advised that tomorrow at sunrise from I-35 eastward, as we often see, we could have visibilities down to a half a mile or lower in some fog. After that, though, the front clears out any low clouds and fog. It's still a warm day, 81 degrees, but the
the north wind drops the humidity, drops the temperatures a bit, increasing clouds late though as the next front approaches. And here it comes, a 20 degree drop in temperatures, lower 60s are current projections, although it could be cooler depending on how this plays out on Friday. Just a slight chance of some light drizzle on Friday, but then warmer, drier weather returning for your spring-like weekend plans. And look at next week, another system barely clips north of us on Monday, staying quite warm through the middle of the week. Just ahead, how the next generation of OBGYNs are juggling both state abortion bans and national accreditation requirements. We'll take you inside several different residency programs to see how they are navigating a changing landscape. Last year's Supreme Court ruling overturning Roe versus Wade has changed how the nation's next generation of OBGYN doctors are now training. Dr. Akshay Saul shows us the new OBGYN residency programs. Akshay is an honorary OBGYN today with you guys. <laughs> At Louisiana State University, I'm in a classroom with the next generation of obstetricians and gynecologists. The They're simulating a manual vacuum aspiration, sure or commonly called a surgical abortion procedure. But they're doing it sides, on fruit. So you're using fruit to practice <laughs> surgical, that, I mean, that sounds crazy. Yeah, but it's, it, it's a really good way to simulate. It really does give residents the opportunity to be much more ready to perform those procedures when they get to an actual patient. Many OBGYN's residencies, where doctors continue their studies after medical school, have been using fruits like papayas for years to hone their skills. Removing the seeds or the contents really very accurately simulates what it's like to remove the contents within the uterus. These abortion simulations have been ramping up after the reversal of Roe versus Wade, especially in states like Louisiana, where elective abortions are now banned and access to in-clinic training is limited. Talk to me about the reaction from your residents when they found out they can no longer practice these procedures. They were scared and they were worried about, will I have that training and will I be an adequate physician and able to do these procedures for my patients? Across the country, OBGYN trainees are in a difficult position juggling both state abortion bans and national accreditation requirements, which mandate that residency programs make abortion training available. Dr. Nikki Zeit, an OBGYN at the University of Tennessee, is in a state where doctors who perform abortions can be charged with a felony. We are still providing life-saving care. We understand that technically that is a felony but we believe that we would be able to defend ourselves. An estimated 45% of residency programs are located in states that ban or severely restrict abortions. At Harvard, doctors are hoping to offer a solution by removing the word abortion from the simulation training. Instead, residents practice on a simulated second trimester miscarriage, a treatment they say can be identical to treatment during an abortion. We are not calling an abortion because we wanted to have all the residents participate. This is a required skill set of anyone who works on labor and delivery. Having these skills is critical, doctors say, especially when pregnancy complications can put a mother's life at risk. And so to learn up on a mannequin is indeed imperfect, but it certainly is a potential stopgap from the, the lack of training otherwise. The next generation of OBGYNs learning in an uncertain medical landscape that's changing in real time. At the end of the day, we want what's best um, for our patients. Dr. Akshay Sayal, NBC News. Well, no reruns tonight on KXAN. It's Chicago Med at 7, Chicago Fire at 8, and at 9 o'clock, it's the 200th episode of Chicago PD. Before, we're back with KXAN News at 10. And of course, you can join us an hour earlier for KXAN News at 9 o'clock on the CW Austin. Here's where to find us. Thanks for listening to KXAN News Nightly. You can also listen to KXAN News Today every morning for more in-depth coverage of what matters most to you.